Hello, my name is David and I'm the developer of Starship Corporation. In this video I will show you what the project is all about, how you can help me finish it and what you will get for it. So let's get started. I was always fascinated by movies that somehow felt real and down to earth. Movies like Aliens, Blade Runner and 2001 A Space Odyssey shaped the vision of what I would like to see in a game of my own. I wanted to create a world where a player is able to design an entire spaceship. Not with a level editor, but where the level editor is an important part within the game. Very much like when you build a base in any classic uh, real-time strategy game, you also in a way build a level for your opponent to conquer. Also, I wanted to make a game where the player can experience what it feels like to be the head of an interplanetary corporation, profiting from war and galactic conflicts, or establishing new colonies and building new worlds. You can choose to use government violence and corruption to make huge profits or to trade with the free societies and use their superior technology. I love engineering, huge shipyards and contemporary shipbuilding and I always wondered how this might look and work in future societies and in outer space. I am certain that in those worlds, even in wartime, enormously expensive warships that sometimes took years to build would not be thoughtlessly destroyed. This installation has a substantial dollar value attached to it. I think a lot of thought and effort would be put into developing plans on how to best capture those ships by boarding and then disabling the crew. How much more profit can you make when you only risk the lives of a few marines and probably get millions worth of equipment in just one quick operation? This is the starting point from which the idea for the game started to develop. The most important element to be made was the ship design. The first thing you can do is to choose either to design completely with your own goals in mind or to build purpose ships for certain contractors like transports, warships, cruise ships, prison ships, hospital ships, science vessels or planetary installations for mining, housing and terraforming. You can select a fuselage that fits the ship's purpose and the budget requirements. For example, a large cargo ship or a small shuttle. You then choose where you want to place all the necessary rooms and facilities on several decks within the limits of your budget and the ship's layout. Your plans have to consider things like energy supply, enough room for crew members and their needs like escape pods, air, water, food and medical supply, storage, space, fuel supply if the ship needs to be equipped with defensive measures like armor, plating and shield generators, or offensive equipment like cannons, missiles or even a hangar with boarding craft. Placement of corridors, stairways and elevators is important to make sure your crew is quickly where it's needed during an emergency or hostile shipboarding. Placement of important or vulnerable rooms is also key to making a ship more resistant against attack or collision. Rooms near the hull are of course more vulnerable than those closer to the core. Placing additional hatches and countermeasures keep intruders from advancing too fast into the ship. There are thousands of possible solutions to all kinds of design goals and every player can experiment as much as he wants to find the perfect solution. Even when you find out later during testing that you could improve your ship's performance just a little bit, you can always go back to this design interface. If you think you made all the right decisions and you want to find out if your design fits all necessary requirements, you can export the plans to be tested with the crew management and AI development system. This part of the game is far from finished, but I can already show you a bit how it will look and work. You choose which kind of mission you would like to perform with your design ship and with either a full crew or a limited number of crew members. Every crew has to have enough technical personnel to deal with maintenance, malfunction or repairs. Technicians are also the best firefighters. Fire, fire, on, level, A, one, generator, fire, destroyed. Get out of here. Eyes and ears, waiting for orders. The bridge has to be manned with enough pilots to perform at optimum level or to perform at all. Move out. 
A minimum of medical personnel is needed to run the ship's life support and food supply. Additional units might be necessary to handle large-scale emergencies or wounded troops. Military personnel is either necessary to provide a minimum of defense capabilities against pirates on civilian vessels, or to man offensive weapons and drop ships on military vessels. SIO units are human-like cybernetic individuals, very expensive but extremely tough and self-maintaining. They are built to perform tasks without hesitation that human crew members cannot or will not do. Waiting for orders. There are three kinds of missions that are sometimes optional, sometimes required by a contractor. Standard operating procedure includes running the ship without malfunction and all alert drills. Some parts of the ship, like for example the bridge, engine room, power generators and life support, need either a permanent crew or maintenance in regular intervals. Otherwise the performance is suffering and they can even take damage from malfunctions or fire. You have to plan all the patrol routes of your technical crew carefully so that you cover all the ship's facilities with the least amount of men. Alarm! Alert drills are the basis of success of all later missions. You tell every crew member where he has to be in case of a specific alert. For example, red alert means enemy attack or intrusion and all crew members prepare for a hostile encounter whereas blue alert means evacuation and every crew member needs to be as fast as possible at the nearest emergency escape vehicle. Emergency missions simulate catastrophic situations like power failure, fire, collision with asteroids or magnetic storms, medical emergencies or alien infections. Mission time, loss of life and damage to your ship are determining factors to mission success. Some missions are endurance tests where your ship gets ultimately destroyed. The longer you can resist, the better. Hostile encounter missions test the crew's ability to defend the ship against pirate attacks, perform ship-to-ship -ship battle and large boarding operations, special forces infiltration or to deal with internal problems like mutiny or computer revolt. The success of each mission adds to the overall rating, which is the determining factor when selling a new ship or the performance of the ship in your own fleet. If I am able, with your help, to add the multiplayer online game extension, the ship's rating will also determine conflicts between players whose ships meet somewhere in the galaxy. Every time you will encounter a new kind of ship designed by another player and survive, you can add the ship class to your crew management system and train with it. I started to develop the game making a prototype using GameMaker, but the more I used this tool, I was convinced I could create the entire game with it. Very soon you will be able to try a very early alpha containing the ship design and some of the crew management by downloading it from my website. Please check for updates. I still have a lot to do and your feedback and support will help me finish this game. Ship design still needs a lot of testing and tweaking and is at about 80%. Crew management is only 40% done and elements like shipyard, which is the economy simulation and the galaxy map are yet to be made. I need your support to finish the first two elements and add the shipyard to build and sell ships and the galaxy map to set up trade routes. If you like all this so far, please help to finance the funding goal of level 1. If you would love to compete with other players in an online game, buy and sell ships and colonies, create and defend trade routes, and encounter thousands of different designs created by other players every time you play, please help finance the game to reach the level 2 funding goal. If you would like to play a story-driven campaign inspired by the novel Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand with lots of additional game content and told with animated cutscenes like the ones featured in the teaser trailer, please support my project to reach level 3. 
If you pledge to this crowdfunding project now, you will get exclusive game content like ships, rooms and missions that will not be included in the final game and you can even be part of the game as a crew member. If you don't have enough money at the moment, you can also help me a lot by sharing this video and this project on your favorite platform. Thanks a lot! Are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man. Game over, man.